There wasn't anything about sort of the other side to lockdowns, like losing jobs and businesses. Do you think that that should be represented in this event? No, you've got to focus on one thing. I think they're What's more that? focusing on solutions. They're not on the victims and on the um, disadvantages that they brought. And so what solutions do you think are most important to focus on? Vaccination and developing of new uh, products. In case you haven't gotten familiar with our special site called rebelwho.com, which is going to keep you up to date on what we're doing in Germany, which is getting to the bottom of the agendas being pushed by big pharma globalists across the world. We've come all the way here to cover the World Health Summit for you guys so that you don't have to play catch up with what's coming next like we've done over the next two years. And thank you for those who have started to chip in to help us recoup the costs. Again, the special site we have where you can do that as well is called rebelwho.com and we really appreciate you guys supporting our journalism so we can bring you stories like what we're about to talk about about today. We are going to see who we can interview on their way into this fancy schmancy award ceremony before the kickoff of the World Health Summit. I want to ask them a couple of questions. If they're coming here to support and be a part of this World Health Organization event, what do they think about none of the events that are being in place having anything to do with harms of lockdowns that millions, if not billions of people have been experiencing over the last two years? Also, Mr. Bill Gates is going to be here. We all saw his face on every screen, so many news telling us that the only way to beat COVID-19 would be for everyone to get vaccinated, as well as to have some sort of digital certificate kind of thing. Take a look at this. And so until you're widely vaccinated, those may not uh, come back uh, at all. Eventually, what we'll have to have is certificates of who's a recovered person, who's a vaccinated person, because you don't want people moving around the world. So eventually there will be sort of this digital uh, immunity proof uh, that you know, will help facilitate the global reopening up. Now you and I saw that come to fruition. We saw vaccines that had no long-term studies be rolled out and mandates at that where people lost their jobs and turned against each other about who had the injection and who didn't. But another thing that has come out in news through Europe actually is that part of those vaccines, at least from Pfizer, their mRNA shot, there wasn't even any testing done to show whether or not those vaccines that were rolled out to millions, if not billions of people, were in fact able to stop transmission. In a COVID hearing in the European Parliament, one of the Pfizer directors just admitted to me, at the time of introduction, the vaccine had never been tested on stopping the transmission of the virus. This removes the entire legal basis for the COVID passport the COVID passport that led to massive institutional discrimination as people lost access to essential parts of society. I find this to be shocking. That I didn't see looked at is perhaps maybe the things over the last two years that we maybe could have learned from, like the lockdowns and the other side of it, maybe some of the harms that it caused to business, economies and things like that. What's your guys' thoughts on that? I, I think that it depends on how you look at it, from the perspective you're coming from. Definitely no one likes lockdown. But in the event where there was a pandemic where we didn't have knowledge about it, there was no nothing. It was just new to us. Everyone, everyone went into a panic mood. We were looking for the best option. And it was just to contain people. So at that moment, that seemed like the best option. Later on, it, when we reflect on it, probably we should have done things better. But at that moment, I think that it was probably fit for perfect. So, yeah. In Italy, you know, we were the first entering into the lockdown. Yeah. So there is a discussion of how to deal in the future. But I think preparedness mm -hmm. is the most important. So, you know, companies and, uh, you know, governments now should be more prepared in the future. Yeah. But preparedness means also that you have to be prepared for a pathogens that you don't know yet, but will appear in the future. So this requires a lot of, you know, collaboration between politicians and, uh, you know, health systems. Yeah. There wasn't anything about sort of the other side to lockdowns, like losing jobs and businesses. Do you think that that should be represented in this event? No, you got to focus on one thing. I think they're What's more that? focusing on solutions. 
they're not on the victims and on the um, disadvantages of the abroad. And so what solutions do you think are most important to focus on? Vaccination and developing of new uh, products. The cost of the measures, uh, counter measures uh, of COVID, that is a very good question. I think that as time goes by, when we, we're no longer so afraid, we will see the cost of, for instance, closing down schools and, and be more reluctant in, in closing so much, uh, so quickly and so long in the, the next time it hits us. Recently, we found out through Pfizer in Europe, it came out that before the vaccines were rolled out, they never did any testing to see that if it stopped transmission or not. And that brings up the concerns of maybe informed consent. What's your thoughts on that? I wouldn't say that I'm an expert in the intricacies of clinical trials and all that and what really happened in COVID. But what I know, because we work with in terms of clinical development and research, is that before a product comes, definitely there's some due diligence that is done. So it might be erroneous to think that that wasn't done. I don't know the details of where you're coming from. But I think that um, a lot of things were sped up. Probably if we took our time, we'd see something more. We don't know, but a lot of things were sped up. And were, they were from institutions that we have trusted for so long. So I think that sometimes you should give them the due diligence and think that they did the right thing. I mean, but at the end of the day, when we sit down, post-recovery, we need to look at assess the things that we did. If there's anything we did which, um, we did which wasn't good and we need to do it better, why yeah, not? Yeah. Exactly. I know Bill Gates is expected to be here. I think maybe he's involved with the opening ceremonies and things like that. He was a big voice at the beginning of the rollout with COVID-19 and he told the world that to get through it, we needed to get a vaccine and also a digital certificate. And then we saw things like vaccine mandates go about. So given that Perhaps they, there was no proof that these stopped transmission and they rolled out mandates that some people lost their jobs from and things like that. What are your thoughts on that issue? Briefly, I'll say that as much as possible when it's a pandemic, we are looking for solutions. But I should also think that we are dealing with people. So we should never forget that human aspect of it. Yeah. And that's all I can say. And, and if you think about the time it took to develop a vaccine in one year, it's unheard of. Yeah? Yeah. And... Um, of course, there's always room for better. Yeah, so you're right, it was unheard of, which I think some people found it uneasy that they were supposed to take it to maybe save their job. Uh, do you guys support that's a, that's a, that? That's a, hard, that's a difficult thing. I think uh, developing a vaccine and making it available is one thing. Forcing people, that's iffy. I mean, but, but again, it's, it's a case-by-case -case situation. Now that two years has passed with living with COVID-19, what is your guys' opinions on sort of the human rights side of things when it comes to vaccine mandates? For me, I would say let's increase the knowledge and acknowledgement that technology is advancing very fast. Not only technology, but also the linkage to legalization of things, testing and everything else. We already know what viruses look like. We already know how to genome type them. We already know how to test them in the laboratory to see if they are safe or not. And therefore, the point of human rights, you should also check, is this saving lives? Is any delay going to kill more people? Which one would you rather save? I think there is no doubt that vaccine is effective in reducing the, the severity of the disease. Not, the, not in catching it, but in reducing the severity. And as for the human rights question, I think that, that, the question, that the vaccine, all vaccinations should be voluntary. That has, in, at least in Norway, that has been really essential for the trust for that, that uh, you can choose to take a vaccine or not, and, it, and you do it for your own good. All right, anything else you wanted to add? Yes, first of all, I answered that not because I am in a certain role, I answered as just a human. So this is not a voice of the country I represent here. Well, we didn't get here in fancy black Mercedes. We hustled through public transit and walked to get here. And we flew in economy class and we're living in an Airbnb. I'm thankful for the roof over my head, but there may or may not have been quite the leak the other night. But all of that is so we can bring you the news. And we hope that you will support us in doing so by going to rebelwho.com and donating what you can to make sure we can bring you reports just like the one you just saw. Drea Humphrey for Rebel News. See you guys in the next report at rebelwho.com.